Welcome to a video I should, probably should have done a long time ago. We're going to do a series on carp care. Now I'm going to go uh, piece by piece, show off each uh, piece of equipment, and then I'm going to show you everything in action from start to finish. I'm going to go out of order just a little bit. The first thing I want to talk about is an unhooking mat. This one is a tracker padded mat, a sanctuary mat. And you see it's very large size and also has a velcro flap to get over top. It also has a spot here for your knees. That way you can bend down and take a you know nice photo over top of the mat. Now I'll, I'll talk about the different types of mats later, but I just want to explain why they're important in carp fishing. Now the first thing that I've seen a few like newer people just not understand is right off the bat if you have a dry on the ground it's kind of defeating the purpose. I always have a little bucket with me. Um, it's a collapsible bucket filled up with water. As soon as I set this up I dump water all over it because you want this to stay nice and wet. Now this one is lucky enough it has a probably like a four inch padding the whole way around it. And when you pour water onto this, it'll actually pull right into the middle. That way, it's, there's always going to be water in there. Um, if it's a hot day, I'll keep putting more water on as I go. Now the thing is, why do you do this? Number one, it's nice and padded. That way when the fish flops on the mat, it's not going to hurt itself and pull off any scales. Probably the most important part is by having the water on the mat, when you take the fish out of the water, put it onto the wet mat, it's not going to pull the slime off. The slime on any fish is how it protects itself from different diseases. So if you basically caught a fish, put it onto the ground, whether it be grass, rock, dirt, or whatever, it pulls all that protective slime off. And then it makes it that much harder for it to fight off any bacteria or diseases in the water. And it's just good practice whether you be you know you're bass fishing pike musky whatever but just like when I get bass fishing well when I catch one I don't drag it across the ground you know you pick it up out of the water hold it up put it back into the water you don't drag it across the ground and pull the slime off and the same is for carp and even catfish or whatever you're fishing for it's there to protect the fish and obviously since the carp is a lot bigger you want to be able to Make sure it goes in just as good as you've taken it out. So you want to always have your mat nice and wet. Have a bucket handy. You can have like a little container. It doesn't have to be like a collapsible bucket or anything fancy. Just a plain old bucket. And let's say you're new into fishing. Let's say you don't have money for like a mat. Then you make uh, cheaper ones that don't cost as much. I know Tracker makes an eco mat. You can get even a yoga mat to start. Or just something padded like a lawn you know, lawn chair pillow or anything. Just something that you can make sure it's going to be wet and also padded for that fish. And then that way when you put it back in, you'll catch it again someday. And it'll be in just as good a shape. Now the thing is, especially, I fish alone a lot of times. Now, let's say I catch a fish and bring it up onto the mat. Well, if I have another run, you don't want to really leave that fish there because it might just flop off. Well, that's where the... Actually, I just had one raised up right now. Um, I have the Velcro flap, and it comes right over on top here. That way, it's going to hold the fish in place. Even if it jumps, you're still going to have it held in place by the Velcro. That way, it can't go off of the mat where it's on dry land. And then, when I'm ready to take a photo, usually that's what I do. I run back, get my timer on my photo, come back, hurry. And Pull the velcro, kneel down, lift up that fish, and take a photo. Now one thing I've been seeing, some people kind of, just because again, they are nearer to the sport, you want to hold that fish low to the mat. Uh, a lot of times you'll feel it tense up, and right when you do, you can set it right back down. If you're holding it way up like this, well it might fall three or four feet, and you don't want that because it's going to damage some of the internal organs or whatnot. So always keep it nice and low to the mat. That way you have much better 
hold, uh, much better control over the fish. Like I said, as soon as you feel it start to tense up, just bend over with it and kind of hold it down until it's done trying to flop, and then try picking it up again. And two, especially when I'm taking photos, uh, as soon as I unlift the flap, usually I pour some more water on it just so it stays nice and moist because you never know. You'd rather over over wet, you know, put more water on the fish than not have it, especially on warm days. Keep putting water on that fish so it stays nice and healthy. And then going back down to the water, you know, we'll put it in and swim it out. But we'll show you that in another part. But I basically wanted to show you, you know, and explain to you why the mat is important. A lot of people lately, you kind of see them preaching, you gotta use a mat, you gotta use a mat. And especially in America, most people have no clue what an unhooking mat is. So if you see them fishing for the first time, instead of badgering them about them not using one, it's probably best to explain to them, hey, or suggest to them, this would be a good idea if you're into catch and release fishing because it's really good for the fish. And that's the thing too, when you get a new person, it's better to help them out and be constructive instead of destructive. You know, don't harp on them about not using something. That we were all new one time, and if you take the time to help them out and show them the way, then they'll be that much of a better angler for years to come. And if I really should show my first photo of a fish, it's laying on the grass. I had no clue what an unhooking mat was until somebody took the time to explain it to me. And not even explain it, but show them you know, why it's important and explain about the slime and just all the benefits of it. And then it will make sense to the person. So this is going to be part one, just talking about unhooking mats in general. Uh, there's a couple different kinds which I'll discuss in the next video. But for now, here we go. And thanks for watching.